Jordan Bazron here with ULMWarhawks.com. We're joined alongside ULM head volleyball coach Patrick Hilds. Coach, uh, kind of just recapping the Sun Belt Conference season so far. You guys started off with two wins, and then it was a nine-game losing skid, and uh, you guys went into Texas for a big weekend to try to make that last push to the to the Sun Belt Conference tournament. And uh, well, you were scheduled to play Texas State Friday night, and uh, and some craziness ensued. Can you talk a little bit about uh, how how the weekend changed? Well, yeah, it was a fun weekend, a lot of driving before we actually got a chance to play. Uh, unfortunate situation, it turns out I think everybody was okay and, and there wasn't a whole lot of damage done in the flooding out in San Marcos and, and luckily I got a chance to run into to Coach Chisholm and we were able to discuss a backup plan and we, we put one together. It wasn't one I was thrilled about but we had to get the game played and there was no way we were going to play it Friday. So we uh, left there, went up to UTA and got some rest and played well. I mean, we came out, we did not play well in the first set against UTA at all, um, but I think the important part is we were able to just kind of salvage a little bit, and I think once we got down 15-4, came out of that and matched them point for point the rest of the way, yeah, they got the set, but we were able to gather ourselves, and then uh, obviously we played really well the rest of the match. Um, unfortunately, we playing a second game less than 24 hours later, going back down to Texas State, didn't work out in our favor, we really didn't play very well, so... We're kind of looking forward to showing Texas State that we can play better than we did. Um, and hopefully that translates to a win this week. Now let's delve a little, delve a little deeper into those games. Uh, UT Arlington, uh, the story of the match was Taylor Zeski. Uh, she came off the bench to, to, to get 17 kills, a double-double, uh, 12 to 13 digs. But uh, the big story was her last set. She basically took over eight kills, one big block to put you guys up one. Uh, <laughs> what made Zesky so so uh, effective? I think I upset her. <laughs> I apparent, apparently, not starting doesn't sit too well with her. So, um, she, it, I called her name pretty quick in the first set, and when she got herself gathered, she didn't look back. And uh, you know, I told her, "Don't make me sit you again to get that kind of performance out of you." But uh, very happy, obviously, with the way she played and. Um, she even commented to me because it was a slide that she ended up blocking and, and all year I've kind of given her a hard time about how she can't block a slide and so she pointed that out on the bus too to, to say yeah I can't block a slide okay coach so apparently I just need to tell her what she can't do and she's going to go do it um, but yeah she played fantastic really kind of put the team on her shoulders and said we're getting out of here with a win and uh, played very very well so obviously I'm very pleased with that. Now Pollock also had a double double, but uh, good good to see things out of H. H really came around. She had ten kills in that match on a, a 250 hitting clip. Uh, what do you think finally clicked between her and and, and Bay? H just been having a hard time all year getting settled. Uh, she got off to a rough start with the fact that she had to get cleared with some uh, excuse me some compliance issues and. Uh, She's kind of been behind ever since, so I think she's still she's still in the middle of the season where the rest of us are kind of at the end of the season, and that could end up being a good thing for us. Uh, she was able to get her slide going and, and blocked very well, slowed down a lot of balls on the block. Um, I thought she played probably her strongest match of the year, and obviously that shows in the stats. But a lot of what she did, is, a lot of what she did in that game and what she does for us doesn't show up in the stats. So it was nice to have her out there. Now, in the final set, you're down 14-8. Zesky gets a kill, and Kim Alvarado comes up. She serves a 5-0 run. Uh, what about Kim's serve makes it so tough for opposing teams? I, I, don't, think, I don't think Kim knows where the serve's going. It's, that's, so she doesn't know where it's going. There's no way the passer can know where it's going. And it's funny because I'll give her a service zone and, and just hope that it ends up going there. I, I'm not expecting her to hit that zone every single time. I, but her serve is tough. She steps back there. It's got a lot of movement to it. Um, it's a high-risk, high-reward serve. And... It, she she served it in the court, really, is what was important for us. It was a good rotation for us. We were able to score some points and get ourselves back into the game. We didn't catch them at that point, but we got ourselves close enough that we were able to take advantage in the end. And, and obviously Taylor's block put us forward, and, and we ran from there. Now, UT Arlington in conference matches, the fourth most blocks per set. They only had five. They matched you guys with five. Uh, how are you guys able to put it down so easily? We, we hit smart. You know, when we get into trouble is when we just hit wildly into the block, and uh, we did that the next night. Um, but against UTA, we hit high hands, we looked to tool, we we took care of the ball, and when we do that, we're tough to beat. Now, 
Speaking of uh, the next night, Texas State, you guys hit at an even zero clip, the lowest since Mississippi State. Uh, what gave you so much trouble with Texas State? Yeah, the, the sad part about that is I was happy to get back to zero. Uh, we, we were we were not good in the first two sets, and we were able to get a little bit better in the last set. Um, I, I think part of it is our legs left us. Uh, I think the the drive got to us at the end, but at the same time, that's not an excuse. You know, we we need to be better than that, and. I think we felt good from the win the night before. We hit the ball really well the night before, and we thought we could go out and do the exact same thing. We just couldn't. Texas State blocked very, very well. And once we started getting blocked, we didn't understand where to put the ball, so we would hit harder, we'd hit out. And you know, it was just a bad hitting night. Uh, passing kind of broke down, too. And, and so we weren't getting good looks at the ball, and we were still trying to do stuff that we weren't capable of doing. Um, we're going to be better this week. Now you face Texas State again tomorrow. They lead the conference in service aces per set. Is a big part of your team's game uh, in the service seed? Of course. Yeah, that's, that's volleyball. And the fact that they're serving so well, that just showed, showed when we played them. They got us out of system, and we're going to have to be much better in our serve receive game. Because when we pass the ball well, Bailey does good things with it, and our hitters are, are open, and they can take advantage of, of holes in the defense. But if we're not passing well, we're a very mediocre team. Now you guys are on the, on the brink of a playoff run here. I mean, uh, you guys are really you know, in ninth place. Georgia Southern, unfortunately, owns the tiebreaker because of their sweep here. Um, but how does it feel to, to even be in the mix this year? You know, that, even that's been a while since you guys have really uh, pushed, for a, pushed for a Sun Belt Conference run. Yeah, that's probably the most legitimate shot we've had at it you know, maybe ever. Um, I know the last time we made any playoff was when we were Southland. So we've never made Sun Belt Conference tournaments. So the fact that we can be talking about it going into the last two weekends is a great thing for us. It's exciting. It generates energy for the program. Um, we still got to go, you know, look at Texas State Thursday. That's it. And then when we're done with that, we'll look at UTA. If we start trying to get too far ahead of ourselves, it'll, it'll, it'll overrun us. Um, you know, Georgia State's getting hot, too, and, and they're not out of it. And the reality is ULL's not out of it either. So it, it's, it's fun because so many teams are still involved. Um, and the fact that one of them is us is exciting for the girls. And, uh, you know, I think we have a real good shot at getting that spot. We have to play well. So what do you think has to happen this week in order for your team to pull out some wins? No we'll pull out wins. We just need to play within ourselves. Um, if we can get three wins here to, to end the season in conference, obviously that would be great. You know, unfortunately we're in a situation where we need help too. And we could win three, and if Georgia Southern wins three, we don't get it. Um, but you know, all we can worry about is what we do. And, and what we have to do is pass the ball, take care of the ball as hitters, and really play for each other. Um, play within ourselves, play for the love of the game, and, and that's what we've gotten back to. Like you mentioned in the beginning, we had a nine-game skid where it just wasn't fun. And uh, I think they've gotten back to enjoying what they're doing and, and having fun playing the game together that they all love. And as long as we do that and play as hard as we can, you know, the outcome will take care of itself. Now, do you think the Sun Belt Conference Tournament gives your team that little extra motivation? I sure hope so. If it doesn't, then what are we here for? Um, yeah, of course it does. And, and that's been their goal all year. Um, they want to make the Sun Belt Conference Tournament. They want to be the team that makes it for the first time ever. And they're extremely motivated to accomplish that. And so I expect us to play very well in, in pursuit of that goal. All right, Coach, thanks for your time. Thank you.